Film Fest DC 2021 is pleased to bring you this conversation with Kenneth Alexander Campbell, director of the Brookline Literary and Hunting Club, showing in uh, the festival in our Metro Shorts program in the DC for Real section. DC for Real films are all shown throughout the festival and uh, they're uh, no charge to, to look at them. So please take advantage of this. I'm Linda Blackaby, I'm senior programmer and uh, just want to acknowledge my um, co-curator, Julia Birch, who's not with us today here in this. I'm based in San Francisco and acknowledge this location on the unceded territories of the Ramatush Ohlone, who alone, along with hundreds of other native tribes, have resided in California for thousands of years. Many Ohlone continue to call the Bay Area home and contribute to the cultural mix here. Kenneth Alexander Campbell is a documentary film director and producer. His words and his work have been published in Oxford American and the Washington Post. He most recently directed the documentary short block for the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Uh, that's what the film and the festival and he has been an impact producer for Sam Pollard's MLK FBI. Uh, today, uh, he's going to be in conversation with Cornelius Moore, who's the co-director of California Newsreel, the 53-year-old film distribution and production company, where he's been a staff member since 1981. Cornelius has been a judge and presenter at film festivals in North America, Africa, and Brazil. He's also an independent curator, especially in, specializing in films from and about the Black world. He curates regularly for San Francisco's Museum of the African Diaspora. So over to you, Cornelius and Kenneth. Good afternoon, Kenneth, Kenneth Alexander Campbell. Um, and I wanted to thank you for, for making this very valuable and charming documentary the, on the Brooklyn, Brooklyn, do you say Brooklyn? Brooklyn, um, Brooklyn uh, Literary and Hunting Club. So I, I, I mean, I'm really appreciating it as, as an example of how Black people have carved out a way to, to develop community, and, and in this case, for nearly 80 years, which is quite incredible. Um, so how did you come to this project? Uh, thank you, Cornelius, for uh, uh, having this, this uh, space for me to be able to talk with you about this work. Um, yeah, so I was introduced to the, the Brookland Literary and Hunting Club uh, through a friend of mine who is an oral historian. Eve Austin. Uh, her husband was uh, invited by some of the younger members of the Brookland Literary and Hunting Club uh, to come and play with them. And he ended up telling her about, uh, about this club. And I think, you know, her response was like most, when they first hear, um, is this a book club or is this a hunting club? Mm. But it's a poker club. Yeah. Um, at the at the core, that's what they um, that's kind of the 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 function. Um, but there's so many other functions that she began to learn about as she asked her husband more questions, and it led her to want to do an oral history project about um, about the club when she learned that it was formed in 1942. Um, I think you know something you know, was kind of aligned with the fact that uh, she was in Baltimore mm. and the club was based in, in Washington, DC. And she knew that I was going to school in the graduate film program at Howard. So she asked me to, uh, to film the oral histories. So I was the, the camera for the original oral history project that we completed um, over the course of 2018 and 2019. Mm. And we were able to sit with some of the, the members, um, obviously none of the original members um, were still alive, but some of the earliest members uh, and one of the, the, the earliest chairs, Tom Taylor, um, he was the first person who I filmed, uh, his oral history I filmed. And after filming his oral history, I told them that this I could see this as a as a short film because he just had a, a, a film star quality <laughs> to him um, that you can only you can only build and earn through um, 
through life and you know through through a, a very interesting life lived so we finished uh filming the oral histories over the course of the year and with each interview uh of the men uh whether it's jim butts or walter robinson or um some of the younger members of the club younger and relatively younger the older members were in their 90s and 80s and some of the younger members are in their 50s and 60s um so just to give a little context when i use the term older and younger yeah. um yeah. but they you know i would just mention to them that uh is an interest for me to take these oral histories uh, at least the visual uh, interpretation of this story to the next level to bring it to more people so that they can kind of see this history um, and not only hear this history mm -hmm. whichever way you access it i think it is uh is valuable and it's relevant um, because this is what people do this is what people seek you know these mm -hmm. these games like poker um or whether it's chess or whether it's checkers or whatever it is it's a way for people to come together and it's a way for people to form connections that uh, enrich other parts, every other part of your life. And so um, it was important for me to, to see that, you know, with older, older men, uh, my age group and even younger, you know, millennials and Gen Z, I don't know a lot of guys that are really playing poker like on a scheduled basis regularly mm -hmm. um and using it as a way like kind of a social um a social glue to keep people uh to stay to intentionally stay in touch mm -hmm. and to to share you know information about like life things you know about healthcare well, and well that's what was one of the things i wanted to talk to you about be, given the title they didn't I, they clearly said they did not right or did they um but and the, the literary part um you know to give sort of cover for 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 um be, being connected with howard and and that that the president at howard at the time would probably would not have appreciated if it was we're gonna have a poker club you know that 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 wouldn't fly, but I'm just curious um, if there were other things that you know what they did, and maybe not as in a form um, as, as so organized as a poker club, but if they did, if they did do sort of book reading or if they did sort of community service or organizing, um, I would be curious and I'd be curious to know about that. Um, yeah. Clearly, the the visually and audibly because of the, the poker that it's perfect for a film um but there might be other things that they um they did they, they did you know it was it was just at the end of the day it was just a poker club you know mm -hmm. but what what that means is so much more than just playing poker when it's mm -hmm. um not about the money it was never really about the money it was really about the coming together and playing together because mm -hmm. play you know, is is um, it, it creates a bed for so many other things. Um, there wasn't really like, as far as they told me and share with with uh, with me, there wasn't books that they were all you know that they had to read and then come back and have something to say about it. But you know, from 1942 until 2019, there was a lot uh, going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of transition, a lot of change in the um, the black community in D.C. and the black community across the United States that they would always discuss, um, especially as they each navigated their careers. You know, these are um, doctors, lawyers. Uh, you know, some of them worked for the, the earliest executives at IBM or chemists or professors, uh, professional men that were navigating spaces that it was a huge benefit for them to be able to come together in a, in a really uh, informal space, mm -hmm. be able to share information about how they each navigated each space. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I think that sometimes that is exactly what's needed and not such a formal here. And now we're going to meet 
And did you mm -hmm. do your homework to discuss? You know, we just right, don't play. Right, right. And we and they were competitive, you know, it was not um, it wasn't about the money, but it was about the credit, you know, it was about the credibility um, and the the competition, the hunt is what they called it. Um, so that the, the literary part was really just the, the discussion and having an interesting conversation. And the hunt was about winning the poker game. So oh, I see, you know, it's, it seemed to me, excuse me, but um, that and I'm kind of curiosity, there were the, the older folk and then there are the more middle-aged folk and the yeah. older folk were very then they presented themselves they were gentlemen and not not that the middle-aged folks weren't gentlemen either but they were trash talking yeah. <laughs> so yeah. and so um i'm just curious did they did the diff the groups the different age groups meet together when they when they yeah. came together or was it more that um you know the older folks were you know with their crew yeah um i think that that is kind of the uh over the decades i think that the the younger groups um have been able to merge and, and become the older group mm. but i think that maybe there is something that's happened with you know more recently um that kind of led to a different kind of transition um you know, most of the, all the members now say that, you know, Block ended, we filmed the ending of Block um, mm. and our oral history really marked the ending of Block. And, you know, now that um, since the film was completed um, and since the oral history project was completed, um, Tom Taylor and Walter Robinson, they've since passed away. Um, and so there's been a lot that has been preserved about the club a lot of you know memory that has been preserved but some of the uh you know i think some of the tradition was was for a particular time mm -hmm. and i think that the you know we'll see we'll see what happens i know that just you know right now in uh mid 2021 some of the younger members who you see in the film they're now vaccinated and coming back together to try to mm -hmm to try to come um, together and play again. But, you know, it's a different, it's a different world scenario. There's different concerns. There's, you know, there are different things to talk about. But um, yeah, I think, I think that it's gonna be interesting to see what, what will, uh, what activity will, will fill that space mm -hmm. and, and, uh, feel that purpose because we always you know every generation needs that i think every generation needs that kind of uh just to be connected and mm -hmm. in whatever way and people don't always verbalize it you know people don't want to be um i don't think people always want to say that you know i'm going to my my support group my support or group right this is a support group without it is. calling it but yeah. at the end of the day you know that is um that's something that is an important part of life is to be able to find other people who you can relate to, who are not just the people who you work with and who aren't just the people who you live with. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see, you know, what, um, what will be possible after COVID and what's gonna, you know, organically form. Cause this was totally organic. Um, so how, how did the, how did, excuse me, how did the group relate to you um you know you were coming from the outside and you yeah. were and and not um a recruit but yeah. you you were coming to, to document to that did they did you feel like you were um being mentored were you in, were you looking yeah, for that i was um i wasn't particularly looking for that Mm -hmm. But I think that they, I think it just, again, that actually kind of organically unfolded. You know, I wasn't, um, I'm not from Washington, D.C. I'm from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I was finding it hard once I moved to D.C. Um, and began uh, my studies in the, in the film program to really connect to D.C. beyond federal D.C. and beyond, you know, kind of the transient population. Um, but it's through this oral history project, through meeting Tom and through meeting the other members who have lived in D.C. all their life and have lived life in D.C. And so when they 
see places um, and when they talked about places there were stories that they would share with me um, and experiences that they would share that really made me uh, it colored in DC which was you know totally um, uncolored and blank before so in that way they really um, made me feel connected to DC as a place where people live and where history mm -hmm. has happened, uh, critical history, you know, you see some of it in the film, Tom, you know, um, his work in DC, childcare laid the groundwork for, you know, national um, Head Start program. Um, he was a part of that and we wouldn't have that um, if it weren't for him and others who worked in that space. But it was also because of things that he saw in DC and, um, yeah, I think I, I, as far as mentorship, though, I think that was something that was um, because I was coming from such a uh, different place and I was just genuinely curious and they were, you know, having to explain things to me that they may not have had to explain to someone from D.C. Mm -hmm. I think it, it kind of naturally formed a kind of um, a kind of unique, you know, connection that that does happen with, uh, it's not uncommon with documentarians or oral historians and the people whose, whose stories that they're curious about and are trying to share. Um, but it was special for me and, and I hope it was, it was special for them. Um, their families, uh, particularly Tom's family, his son and his grandson, um, you know, those are, those are good uh, relationships that I have now and so it was even beyond just the mentorship, but it was, you know, the relationship and forming new community with, um, with this place. And it's a, it's a, that was a document for all those folks that they can share with each other and of memories. And that's, that's been ver very important that, and to have, because a lot of people don't have that. Um, and so this is, I, th I see the DC Oral History Collaborative and the DC Humanities are also um, involved in this. So does that mean that the, how, how does that mean that the, the film is available for the, the, yeah. the surrounding area in DC? So area? once we, um, once the, the film is no longer um, showing at festivals, the film will be available at um, the DC, uh, Public Libraries, uh, DC Dig, which is their online uh, digital archive. Um, so it'll be preserved there along with all the oral histories, uh, the audio and the, the video recordings mm -hmm. of each member's oral history. Mm -hmm. um, transcripts, everything is there. The film will be there. Um, and it'll also be a part of the, uh, the new uh, MLK DC Public Library. Um, which will be opening this year. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a part of an exhibit on the DC Oral History Collaborative. Oh, that's great. That's great information to know. And a final question I maybe have for you about your, your uh, filmmaking. I, I noticed that you were the uh, impact producer for MLK FBI, the film on how the FBI was um, monitoring, we'll say, Dr. Martin Luther King's activities. Um, and so, are you someone who this is you're a documentary filmmaker and you're um, interested in kind of history as a documentary filmmaker? Is that where your trajectory that's where you see your trajectory going? Absolutely. Um, I think that uh, I think documentary is the most it's the most interesting form of storytelling for me right now uh, because is really the process of defining our reality. We, we call it, you know, re sharing history, but really it's, uh, it's seizing the power to define what this human experience is um, and making it cinematic. And, you know, when you make things cinematic, it makes them undeniable. So for me, it's the most interesting thing to be a part of. I'm glad I'm born in a time where I have access to it. So, yeah, that's, that's what I see in my future. Oh, great. Thank you. I appreciate your work. Is there, is there anything else you'd like to say? 
before uh, we... i'm just i i'm i'm really really glad that this film was accepted to dc uh, film fest dc um you know the for it to be a part of the longest standing film festival in dc um there isn't a more relevant and, or a, a higher honor for this film so thank you for including me okay so thank you kenneth alexander campbell for making yeah. Bo brooklyn literary and hunting club and and for joining us both of you for joining us today thanks to our audience too for watching